hello there humans and earthlings whoever you are wherever you are whatever you're doing and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too welcome back to channel i'm bushka you hot raving lunatics and today we're going to be talking about something that's a really important skill in blitz indeed if you want to be a good player this is probably one of the things that will set you apart and it is your ability to operate under pressure in small spaces within very very close range of the bad guys and yet seemingly they just can't lay a finger on you and it's called isolating your target it's a lot like if you've ever seen those wonderful nature documentaries where the uh the wildebeest get isolated from the herd and the stalking lions cut them down uh it's kind of like that finding the weakest point of attack and uh taking it out before the bad guys can get around and help out and a lot of it has to do with what they call game sense or situational awareness uh, and it's it's very much about being aware of what's going on around you. And, and when you see people get things wrong, it's generally because they've overextended. And sometimes it feels like you're nailing it and you're actually doing the right thing when, in fact, you are quite simply just too far ahead of the rest of your team. For instance, you're going to see in a second there's a T57 Heavy who's desperately trying to push up around here. And he and I are going to start hit point trading, but he's he's gone way too far. And we all make this mistake. We all make this mistake. No one wants to be the first guy through the door because the first guy through the door gets shot at by everyone. And even if he's doing the right thing, it's his hit point pull and not yours that's getting the beating. So that's when isolating goes wrong, when you try and push around and find a tank on its own, but you just run into an entire team. The skill in isolating is really, really important when you're in close proximity to the bad guys. And you start making decisions based on the mathematics of the tanks in front of you, their DPM, whether they're on a full reload on a clip, have they overextended? Can you get shots off on them without being hit by tanks in the general proximity? Is the guy next to you going to push with you and is the two of you together going to be able to DPM down the target in, before you start taking, you know, life-altering damage, which makes you into a combat ineffective little unit? You can see me in this Object 263 here are uh, jockeying for position. And I've looked at this and I've said, hmm, there's a 54E1 there and a bat chat. If I'm around here into this bat chat, that 54E1 cannot get there in time to really do a whole lot to me. If I can get across this gap and just deal with the bat chat, then we can make beautiful music happen. And the E1 can't have a whole lot left in that clip. So all I've got to do is deal with this bat chat. And once he clips out, that's not a lot of damage to take back. And I should be able to just simply drive around the corner, track him up and finish him off. And that's isolating a target. Indeed, the E1 finally gets a shot in me, but both these tanks are now clipped out and both these tanks are for the knacker's yard. That took us half our hit points, but it blew the flank wide open and absolutely exposed the 62A that was at the back there. And it really was a move that went a long way towards winning the game. And the 263 with me was uh, completely happy to take shots at both those targets as I pushed up and spotted and kept them lit. That's isolating in the middle of a whole lot of nastiness. It, but two clippers like that isn't the worst. And a lot of times what you have to understand is that when you're doing this, you are going to take hits. Quite often you know that it's going to cost you literally most of your hit point pool or quite possibly all of it, but you know that it, it's worth it. And the only way you do that is, is experience. The only way you figure this out is experience. You can see down there in the middle of the map, Dead Rail, they've got three TDs. Two of them are at the back. I'm going to guess that the Waffle Tractor is in the far corner because he's not spotted and we've moved all the way up to the far southeastern corner of the map. So there's a very low hit point Object 140 in here and an AMX 50B. If I can clear the 140, I can just eat the 50B alive. And that'd be great. So we put one in the 50B pretty quickly. Take one back so he's got two left in the clip. All we've got to do now is clear this 140. He's got one left in the clip. And we should be able to sneak around here and get the 50B. Unfortunately, we don't clear that 140. But what this does, and what it, it's beautiful. This is such a an easy move to make. And such, I think, an easy move to make the call on. Is that we now get the cap. Uh, we push them out of the middle. Their two TDs at the back are isolated. They don't have any support. And this is going to cost us a lot of hit points. But at the same time, I feel like it was worth it. We're going to take off two tier 10 tanks and we're still going to be alive at the end of it unless he gets a very, very lucky roll. Unfortunately, I wasn't counting on the shot that just took me on the left. You can see from over there. And I believe that may well have been 
the IS-8. I don't know where he is, but I think he's somewhere down in that general proximity. But you get the idea. If it wasn't for that rogue shot, then we're at 500 hit points. But we're not. We still cleared the middle, and uh, we take out most of their team, the hard stuff. And we did it by using the buildings here as cover and finding a situation where we could isolate the bad guys. The better you get at this, the more you can do it in crazy situations. Like there are three guns right next to us and there is a Jaegeru also just down there looking at us as well. So that's four tanks here. Two of them have massive guns, the Jaegeru and the WZ, and three of them have big guns, the Jaegeru, the WZ, and the MBT-70 over there, the Cam, the Pamp Vargan 70. And then you've got this bloke in the IS-7 who's just got no done gun depression and is trying desperately to get a shot up so he can shoot that Leopard PTA. And what we're going to be doing here is looking at different tanks. So you are keeping an eye on the reload of different tanks, seeing when the Jaegeru fires, when the guys on the left fire, uh, who has an overview of on, on you and do they have a shot in the barrel, Okay, the Jaeger is fired. I've got about eight or nine seconds to do whatever the hell I want. I can look up here. I can sneak down there. I can get a shot in on the MBT-70. I pull back. The IS-7 is going to pump up. He wants to get a hold of the Leopard PTA. We're going to get another shot in his side. Doesn't have a lot of gun depression. It's very hard for him to get down here. Still keeping an eye on the Jaeger. And you know, you know, you're tracking targets. You're trying to track tanks like that. And suddenly, despite the fact you were within QE of a whole lot of bad boys... I've yet to get scratched, and I've done 2k damage, and we've broken their back. I'm going to show you a game here to finish on uh, Dynasty's Pearl, and I'm running the M4801 pattern again. Indeed, these two games were consecutive, one after the other, and they were games where I was specifically looking for this footage to like isolate. Uh, I had enough footage already, but I, I wanted to bump a couple because I didn't think they were that strong. And what I'm doing here is tracking targets, counting tanks, and I'm an old... Warhorse when it comes to counting tanks. You'll hear me all the time saying in on live streams, I see one, I see three, I see five, we're missing two, we're missing a waffle tractor and a 183, that kind of thing. Uh, and all I'm doing here is trying to keep a look at where all the tanks are, where they could possibly be. That 183 is in a horrible position. I mean, that's just a pointless position as far as I'm concerned for a 183. Unless I'm an absolute muppet, he is not going to get a shot at me. I'm resetting camo and I see straight away the tanks on my right are coming. No big deal. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to help out with them. The IS-7 again. None of those guns need to worry me at all right now. It's very unlikely that any of those guns are going to get shots at me. The only tanks that can really get a good look at me are this STB-1 and the KPFZ-70. Uh, and even then, like long-range bombs and very slow reloads on that 70. So I'm not that stressed about it. Going to try and get a shot into him. Just miss him. Fine. Leave him on his own there pull back around and start looking for other targets and the isolation is really going to come in towards the end here where you're going to see there's going to be a 268 and 2183s left now i've been the meat in that kind of sandwich before 150 millimeter and 2183s and even though i've got nearly 2,000 hit points in the m48a1 i'm pretty confident that if they wanted to and they get one good roll each that's enough to to clear a single medium tank at tier 10 so I'm very, very conscious of where they are and the fact that they're engaging that IS-7. The 268 is my main worry. He seems to have a clue as to what's going on here, which is a, uh, a clear-cut indicator that he's a tank I should steer clear of. And I'm just looking for easy targets. Targets of, you know, targets of opportunity. And you're going to see how these big alpha guns, they can be very dangerous at the end of the game, but you can neutralize them just by isolating them and not giving them shots. Now, I was expecting that out of the 183. That's fine. I, I, there was very little odds that he was going to penetrate my turret. That's fine. And we move along here, and this 183 is a one-shot. Now, I'm basically going to let the red team do itself in here. Help T95 calls noob team. Good stuff. I don't have to go out here. I just don't have to. It's three on three. Uh, the 268 is damaged. The other 183 is going to push up here in support i'm just going to pull back i'm going to isolate the object 268 by removing these two guys come around here and not let either of these tanks get a shot on me take the shot in the 268 all well and good and then i'm going to walk over here and do exactly the same thing with these two 183s and this is all about operating in confined spaces with the bad guys and yet at the same time not really taking any risks at all like the 
the, the amount of times I'm going to get hit here is negligible. I think I got hit once by that. Uh, yeah, once I bounced one shot from a 183, and the rest of the time I'm just sitting here going, la di da di da da that's, that's literally it. Just keeping these two guys perma-spotted, tracking him so he gets stuck up on the top. 54 clears him, and that's all she wrote. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's a super important thing for you to do in Blitz. One of the most important skills you can get a hold of. Isolating targets and operating within close proximity of the bad guys. Uh, remember to subscribe, like the videos, and until next time, look after yourselves and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.